In this tutorial, we will explain how to successfully complete a request for lease proposal for a GSA lease project. We will go through the standard GSA forms and additional submittal requirements as outlined in Section 3. How to offer the request for lease proposal, or ROP. Since each ROP and project is unique, each ROP might be slightly different, so be sure to thoroughly review the specific ROP and items required to make an offer. If you have questions or need clarification, you should always contact the GSA contracting officer or broker representative for your particular proposal. In this segment, we will discuss the correct way to complete a proposal for lease form, GSA Form 1364, and its attachment, the lease proposal data. A proposal to lease form has four sections. They are broken down by the following. Description of premises, section one. Space offered and rates, Section 2, Lease Terms and Conditions, Section 3, and Owner Identification and Certification, Section 4. In Box 1A through F, you will list the building name, if applicable, address, city, state, zip code, and congressional district as shown in the example. In Box 2, you would state the total number of floors being offered to the government and total floors in the building. In box three, you will list the total rentable space in the building and indicate if it's office, warehouse, or other type. In our example, the building has a total of 12,304 square foot of office space. Boxes four through eight deals with the additional building information. In our example, in box four, the floor load is listed at 150 pounds per square foot. And in box five, the measurement method is ANSI BOMA. This is where no renovations were done to the building, so six was listed as not applicable. If renovations were completed, this is where you would list the year completed. In box seven, list the building age, either as this numeric age or the year the building was built. In box eight, fill in the site size. In section two, you will complete the square footage and rental rate details, broken down by type of rate. In boxes nine, 10, and 11, you will list your ANSI BOMA square feet, rentable feet, and common area factor that you are offering to lease to the government. And our example, 8,526 square feet is the ANSI BOMA square feet, and 8,952 is the rentable square feet being offered. The common area factor is calculated by dividing the rentable square feet by the usable square feet. 8,952 divided by 8,526 to derive a common area factor of 1.05 rounded. It is important to make sure you have reviewed the RLP paragraph 1.02 for the amount of square footage that the government is seeking to ensure you can comply. In the tenant improvements, box 12A, you will list the total cost of the tenant improvements per the ROP requirements. As a reference, check ROP section 3.07, tenant improvements included in offer for the TI allowance per square foot and multiply the square feet you are offering to get this amount. In boxes 12B and C, you will list the amortization term, which should be the firm term for the lease and the amortization rate. Once you use those numbers to calculate the yearly cost for TI rent, divide the total TI rent by rentable square feet to fill out the rate in box 12D. Fill out the rate in box 12E by dividing the ANSI BOMA square feet. Box 13 concerns building specific amortized capital. You would follow the same steps to calculate the amortized cost in section D and C as you would with the annual rent for the tenant improvement rent per square feet was calculated. For box 13A, you would either provide a detailed breakdown of the security cost in the security unit price list attachment 
or listed in Section 3 of the RLP, depending on the requirements. Review this one. Box 14 would be the total shell build-out per RLP and lease requirements. When it comes to shell costs, GSA requires a warm lit shell versus a cold shell that's normally standard with commercial leases. The shell build out should only include what it costs to meet the requirements in the RLP and lease. Box 15 is a total build out cost to meet the requirements in the RLP. The example shows the total build out of $518,206 which consists of tenant improvement costs of $368,206, basic security costs of $15,000, and the shell build-out costs of $135,000. Boxes 16 and 17 are where you would list the shell rent and operating rent. The shell rent would include taxes and insurance. The operating rent would include expenses such as janitorial, heating, air conditioning, and building maintenance. A total expense breakdown would be complete in the lesser annual cost statement, GSA Form 1217, and that is used to derive your operating cost rate. In the example shown, the shell rent is $16.10 for the rentable square feet and $16.90 for the ANSI BOMA square feet. The number of years the lease is effective is five years or the firm term of the lease. The operating cost is $7.47 for the rentable square feet and $7.84 for the ANSI BOMA square feet. The total annual rate is listed in line 18, which is derived when you add both the shell and operating rent for both the rentable and usable square feet. In the example shown in box 19, the total annual rent is $302,040.48. If there are any step rents in your offer, you would list them in the total annual step rent section of the proposal to lease form. In this example, the annual rent is $33.74 per rentable square feet for years 1 through 5, with an increase to $36.70 per rentable square feet in years 6 through 10. Remember to list the total rent, not just the shell rent. Line 20 is where you will fill out the parking information as shown in the example. Please review section 1.02 of the RLP for the amount and type of parking spaces the government is seeking to ensure you can comply. In section three, we will discuss the initial lease term, tenant improvement schedule, and additional financial aspects of the offer. Box 21 is where you will fill in the lease term. In the example, the lease term is 10 years with five years firm as shown in section A and B. Section C is the number of days notice the government must give to terminate the lease. In this example, the government can terminate the lease by giving 90 days notice. Both the lease term and number of days to cancel the lease the government is seeking are listed in RLP paragraph 1.02. You will complete box 22 if any renewal options are sought in the RLP. In this example, no renewals were required and NA is shown. Box 25 will be completed if the broker commission is involved. Box A is where you list your broker commission you negotiate with GSA's broker. You would reference the broker commission agreement included with the offer package. Box B is where you state your owner's broker's commission if you have a broker representing you. In box C, list the payment due at lease award and occupancy to the broker. In this case, it's 50% due at award and 50% due at occupancy. In box 26, complete the offer's tenant improvement schedule with the architectural and project management fees. In our example, there is an architectural and engineering flat fee of $20,000. As shown on the proposal to lease, this could either be listed as a percent of ANSI BOMA, total TI construction, or flat fee. There is also a lesser project management fee of 2%. Other fees can be stated, but be aware that the government only needs the architectural and engineering and project management fees. Fees are included in the present value prices evaluation.
CRLP paragraph 4.05. In box 27, complete the additional financial aspects of the offer, including the adjustment of vacant premises, HVAC overtime rate, and building hours. In the example shown, the adjustment for vacant premise rate is $4 per square foot. An adjustment for vacant premise rate would be the dollar amount the lease rate would be reduced if the government vacates the property during the firm term of the lease. See paragraph 2.08 of the lease document for further details. In the HVAC overtime rate line, fill in your offered rate for HVAC if it is needed past normal office hours. Ensure you state if the rate is for the entire office or per floor. You also list a separate overtime rate for rooms which require 24-7 HVAC, such as a computer room. The easiest way to list this rate is a yearly amount. Next, you would state the building's hours of operations as shown in the example. Finally, under the percentage of government occupancy, you would list the total percent the government would occupy in your building under this lease. In the example shown, the government is occupying a rounded 73%. Box 28 would be used to list any attachments submitted with the offer, such as seismic compliance, energy star, zoning, attachments to the RLP, and evidence of a system awarded management registration, SAM.gov. In box 29, if you fill in any other remarks or conditions with respect to your offer. For example, if you are offering free rent for the first two months, you would state that in this box. Please be aware that if you impose conditions that are contrary to the government's stated requirements in the RLP and lease, your offer may be deemed technically non-compliant. Last, but not least, here is section four. Complete the recorded owner information in box 30. Check what your interest is in the property, whether you are the owner or agent. List your information and sign and date. The lease proposed a data form deals with the ownership interests, life safety, and other aspects of the property being offered. Question one inquires about the ownership of the property. You would list if it's a fee ownership or other. The example shown lists the property as a fee owner. Question two is in reference to floodplains. You will list your property is either in 100 or 500 year floodplain. GSA does not award leases in a 100 year floodplain unless it is determined that there is no other alternative. You would reference section 2.02 .02 of the RLP to understand the floodplain requirements. Question three deals with seismic safety. This will inform GSA if the property being offered meets seismic requirements in Section 2.03 or Section 2.04 of the RLP. This depends if the premises is located in a moderate or high seismicity area of the United States. You will also complete the seismic certification form, which is an attachment to the RLP. In the example shown, the premises is an existing building and meets seismic requirements. Questions 4 through 7 are in reference to historic preference, asbestos, fire, life, and safety, and accessibility. As shown in the example, in question 4 you would list if the premises being offered is a historic building or a non-historic building in a historic district. For further explanation, please reference section 2.05 of the RLP. In question 5, you would list if the property being offered contains any asbestos containing material as shown in the example. Please reference RLP paragraph 2.06 for information about asbestos requirements. Please note that if space is offered that does contain asbestos containing materials, a management plan is required. In question 6 and 7, you would list if the property meets the fire life and safety accessibility standards required in the request for lease proposal and the lease. See ROP paragraphs 2.07 and 2.08 for the fire safety and accessibility requirements. 
Section A concerns the government's Energy Star requirements and if your building has received the Energy Star label. In this example, the building has not received the Energy Star label, but the offeror has included a list of cost-effective energy improvements with the offer. See RLP paragraph 2.09 for the government's important energy efficiency standards. Finally, question 9 concerns offerors that are hub zone small business concerns. You would only fill this out if you were a hub zone small business concern. You can review RLP paragraph 4.02 regarding hub zone small business concerns requirements. Mm -hmm.